It's been a long and winding road ever since I uploaded my first video a little over a year ago. Ah yes, what an innocent chubby cherub I was back then. So I think it's about time we get serious with this channel and do an age-old YouTuber staple. A Q&A video. Otherwise known as a filler episode if this were an anime. So today I'll be answering all your questions you've ever had in life about me. Also apologies for any background noise, it's in the middle of July here in California and I've got the AC on blast. Happy birthday, my question is, which item in your collection, excluding Super Mario RPG stuff, is your favorite? Right off the bat, we have a hard-hitting question here, and Doat Boy also excluded the obvious answer, which would be my Mario RPG stuff. I have to give two answers here because one is something I've bought, and the other thing is something I've made by hand. I think my favorite item that I've collected is my Mario Odyssey Nintendo Switch bundle. Believe it or not, I went through a period in life where I wasn't really thinking about video games. I was really busy with work, college, life, etc. The Nintendo Switch is what sparked my interest and passion back into video games and collecting. As you can see, that's not going anywhere anytime soon. So I owe a lot to the Nintendo Switch for bringing back that passion I have for video games. My other favorite item has to be the wooden question mark block that I made by hand. This was made out of pine wood, metal drawer rails, and a xylophone that I dismantled, as you can see in the video I made about it. It's definitely the most difficult project I've ever completed, but it's probably the most rewarding. And the video's pretty good too, just saying. Happy B-Day, how to light up a room so beautifully. Oh my god, stop, come on. <laughs> Um, I assume you're talking about the lighting I have set up in the game room. I use the cheapest LED strips that I could find on Amazon and painstakingly stuck them to the top of each shelf along my bookshelves and my cubbies. It took a long time, but I kind of regret buying the cheapest LEDs because after a while, some of these are starting to flicker and also the color is slightly changing over time. Word of advice is go for the more expensive ones if you're gonna do it yourself. But in my game room video, a closer look, you can actually see how I set these up under each shelf and how I folded them to kind of cut corners from getting those attachments and um, yeah, you can check that out in the video. What kind of kid were you? And how did video games fit in the overall picture of your childhood? I was a completely awkward, anxiety-filled kid growing up. I was the spiky-haired weeb kid before it was cool to love anime and video games. Besides the awkwardness, I always aspired to be like Arnold from one of my favorite cartoons growing up, Hey Arnold, on Nickelodeon. He always did the right thing and tried to befriend and have empathy for other people, especially when others did not. And that really influenced my mind as a child in a very positive way. The episodes that stuck with me the most were the ones where Arnold would be nice to the strange characters that no one else would. Like, he would be nice to Stoop Kid or Monkey Man or Pigeon Man or there was even an episode where Arnold helped this bully in school learn math because he realized that he was a bully because of his insecurity with his own intelligence and for a kid that that was really that was really influential to me wanting to be that guy who always was nice to the strange or different people that others would not as far as what video games were for me as a kid growing up they were a complete escape just like movies or tv or comic books or books would be an escape for other people, video games was that escape from me. It was that escape from reality, that break from my life that I needed uh, as a kid. Besides having my family with me, I was a very lonely child growing up, so video games were kind of like my friends. It's, it's really sad to say, but it's true. At any point, I could jump into a video game and with my childlike imagination, I could be in that world and escape from reality, uh, as long as I did my homework, of course. So yeah, video games were part of my life at a very early age. And I'm lucky to have a mom that encouraged me to play video games, and she wasn't like one of those 90s moms that was like, yeah, video games are for the devil, they're gonna rot your brain. No, she, she understood that it was actually helping me with my imagination and my motor skills, and she saw the good that video games have. And she would even play video games with me. So yeah, 
I was very lucky. Happy birthday, hope it amazing. A very fine question indeed. I've been enjoying your videos so much. I do have a question though. What does the name Daxel mean? Keep up the great work. It's uh, Japanese for your mother. Uh, no. <laughs> so Daxel is a made up name. I was going through a lot of different names when I was planning on making this channel a long time ago. One day I remembered that in the Christopher Nolan Batman films, Bruce Wayne is depicted as having a terrible fear of bats. And when he becomes Batman, he chooses bats as his symbol of strength, overcoming his fear. He becomes a symbol of fear for his enemies. That kind of inspired me to take something that maybe bothered me or was uh, I was afraid of or something negative about me and turn it into a positive thing. So that was kind of the base inspiration to finding my name, my YouTuber name, my gaming tag name, whatever. So I've always struggled with anxiety and depression, mostly anxiety to the point where needing prescription medication. In fact, my anxiety was the worst it's ever been in the last few years. It got so bad that I couldn't handle being in crowded areas for too long or be social at all for that matter. Even being on the phone with a stranger is pretty difficult and I remember during the pandemic I took an online Japanese class and after the first day seeing myself on the screen with 20 other students, I quit because it was just like I couldn't handle it. I was so tense and just just filled with anxiety even though I was in my room and everyone else were, wasn't around me. So it it, it's bad. It was bad. It really sucks. But forcing myself to be social whenever I can, like going to anime cons and gaming cons and stuff like that, actually really helps. And having my wife, who is also my best friend with me, really helps too, because she also deals with anxiety and depression. So we understand one another. Anyway, long story short, I took the word anxiety and my real name, Daniel, and I put those two words in a, uh, a word scrambler website, and I just kept hitting randomize over and over and over, scramble over and over and over, and it kept giving me different jumbled up words using the letters from Daniel and anxiety to try to get a inspiration of what my name could be, what kind of word or name could I form with those letters from those two words. And I kept hitting scramble, scramble, scramble over and over until finally I saw Daxel. It just clicked with me. This was it. And it's not using all the letters from both words, but to me, that's what Daxel is. It's taking my anxiety and making something positive out of it, using it as a name, as an identity for gaming and my YouTube channel. By the way, also helps with my anxiety because putting myself out there and expressing myself through these videos actually does a lot of good for my anxiety. So long answer, but there you go. There's the origin story of Daxel. Why are you so handsome? Oh my God, that's so embarrassing. How did that get in there? <laughs> also, could you make me a sandwich, honey, when you get a chance? Thank you. First of all, happy birthday. I totally understand your love and history with Super Mario RPG. Mine happens to be Chrono Trigger with the same feels. My question is, how many hours do you think you've spent with Super Mario RPG since you first played it? Well, this is embarrassing, but uh, Chrono Trigger happens to be one of those games that I haven't finished yet. I know, I know, it's a tragedy. I never got around to finishing it. I've started the game multiple times and usually end up getting distracted by another game that comes out like Tears of the Kingdom, and then I forget about Chrono Trigger and I want to start it from the beginning again because I forget what the heck happened. I have played Chrono Trigger, I've started it multiple times, but I have yet to even... I've, I haven't even gotten halfway. So it's definitely top of my list in my backlog. It's just, it's so hard to get to your backlog when so many awesome games are coming out. But yes, Chrono Trigger, I really want to finish it. But to answer your question, the website howtobeat.com says that Mario RPG is about 17 and a half hours in length. And I almost always do a playthrough once or twice a year, usually around Christmas. 
So times that by 15 or 20 some odd years. Yeah, you do the math, but a lot, a lot of hours. What's your personal favorite movie and show of all time? Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, always. As far as TV goes, I would say the first two that come to mind are Yu Yu Hakusho or The Office. Big fan of those two. Yu Yu Hakusho might be my favorite anime, and The Office is probably my favorite show in general. Next we have two similar questions. Happy birthday, what's your favorite console? As expected, amazing video, question. What was your favorite console growing up and favorite game from that console? If it's the SNES, pick a game besides Super Mario RPG. Currently, my favorite console of all time has to be the Nintendo Switch. I mean, it's amazing. It has everything I could ever want. It's portable, it's a home console, it can hook up to your TV, you can play so many different games on the go even. It's responsible for bringing back my passion for gaming, and it'll be the new home to Super Mario RPG. Growing up, however, I have a hard time choosing between the Super Nintendo and the PlayStation 2. The Super Nintendo is probably my favorite nostalgia-wise and classic gaming-wise. The PS2, man, I have so many memories with the PS2. It, this is really neck and neck. Since I'm always talking about Nintendo, today I'm going to say the PS2 was my favorite growing up. And here's why. I think I just had so many more experiences with the PS2 as a older child. My concept of a good story was more developed, I was able to read a little easier. And the games, the, the games for the PS2, it was just endless hits, endless classic games. So many games that really just captivated my imagination and drew me into the video game world. Uh, a lot more than the Super Nintendo did, I think mainly because of the art of storytelling in video games developed and being in a three-dimensional world was a lot easier to project yourself into than a 16-bit world. Uh, I'm talking about games like Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, Shadow of the Colossus, Jack and Daxter, the trilogy, Shinobi, Beautiful Joe, did I mention the Dragon Ball Z Budokai and Tenkaichi series, Sly Cooper, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. The PS2 was my home for a long time. As for my favorite game for that console, I've got to go with Dragon Ball Z Budokai, the first one. It was the first game I got for the system. I remember going to GameStop, or maybe it was Funko Land at the time, to trade in most of my Nintendo collection, my NES collection, uh, to afford a PS2 and the Dragon Ball Z Budokai game. I was a huge Dragon Ball Z fan growing up. Like, I did my hair like Goku every day. It was very cringe, but uh, I remember going home that night and just playing Dragon Ball Z Budokai all night. Those were some good times, yeah. <laughs> happy, happy birthday! Sending hugs from Philadelphia. What is your favorite level or world from Super Mario 3? My favorite world in Super Mario 3 has to be Giant Land. Uh, not just for the giant themed levels, which were really fun, but the overall theme is a bop. The main level that sticks in my mind right now has to be the very first one. But I remember like it was yesterday, running around the house telling everybody to come look, come look, I found a secret in the game, where you crouch down on top of one of the white blocks and Mario slips through behind it. And then you go behind the curtain at the end of the level and you find the flute. And just that was like so mind blowing as a kid. Uh, so yeah, I gotta say my favorite level has to be the first one. Happiest of birthdays, Dax. My question would be, what are the best memories with the 5th, 6th, and 7th generation of video game consoles? So 5th generation, PlayStation 1, I remember being obsessed with this game called Taifu. It was a action adventure game where you play as this tiger kung fu character, or kung fu master. It's kind of like one of those hidden gems, I guess, for the PS1. Uh, I can't remember what the story is about, but I know you go around each level and you beat up other animals like monkeys and birds and other ninjas in the game. I just remember it being a lot of fun and I was obsessed with the character design of Typhoon. He just looks so cool. 
and the whole game had voice acting, I remember. Also, who didn't have memories of being blown away with the Nintendo 64 with Mario 64? I mean, that was the first time you heard Mario's voice, and the first time you could explore in a three-dimensional world the Mushroom Kingdom, Peach's Castle, the soundtracks, 6th Gen, it's all about the PS2. I never owned an Xbox. As I said before, the PlayStation 2 was a huge, huge games console for me. I remember getting my PS2 and bringing it home for the first night. And one of the reasons why I kept it on all night was because we forgot to get a memory card. And uh, I remember being so shocked that it would, didn't come with a memory card. You had to buy it separately. And back then, I think the memory cards were 25 bucks, I want to say? Somebody correct me in the comments, but I remember it being like shockingly expensive at the time. But yeah, I had to keep the console on until I got a memory card because I didn't want to lose my save uh, in Dragon Ball Z Budokai. However, I also had a Dreamcast and a GameCube at the time. Not as many games for those consoles, but they were still a staple in my childhood. But at that time, Blockbuster was my domain. I remember going to Blockbuster every week. My mom would take me and my sister, and I would just go straight to the game section and just spend all that time looking at each game very carefully because this was a huge decision. I could only pick one game. If it wasn't a good one, your whole weekend was ruined, right? I remember trying different games for the GameCube and the PlayStation 2. One of my favorite games uh, to get at Blockbuster was uh, for the GameCube. It was Custom Robos. That one was really fun. Uh, it's really expensive now. I don't own it. But I rented that one probably more than a couple times, I'd say, because it was just so much fun for me. Seventh gen, the PlayStation 3. I remember setting it up for the first time and being amazed by the menu system. Being able to navigate through the settings and photos and games, it was, it was very new at the time. Like, the PS2 had, you know, you could go into the menu settings and go into the memory card, but the PS3 was like something I never experienced before, where even just turning it on with the wireless controllers was, was like, this is the future. You know, I could turn on my console with the button in the middle of my controller, which isn't even connected. Selecting the PlayStation Store and being able to download a game without a CD in it, like that was just, that was mind blowing at the time. I really felt like the fanciest kid on the block, honestly. So that's it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little Q&A. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted their questions. I'm sure I gave you a lot to ponder and reflect on, possibly even inspired you to go out and make your dreams come true. All I can say is, you're welcome. See you later.